Konnichiwa. In previous lessons, we distinguished between sequential and combinational circuits, then learned about flip-flops, which will be the basic unit of sequential circuits we'll design in this course. In this video, we will go a little deeper with an overview of sequential circuits. Let's hop in a helicopter and look down at the broad categories of digital logic circuits. Any logic circuit can be built from the basic logic gates, like OR, NOT, or NAND. As discussed before, combinational circuits are a function of only the current inputs, whereas sequential circuits depend on memory of past inputs. There are two categories underneath sequential circuits, Mealy and Moore. A circuit following a Moore model, or more colloquially, a Moore machine, features outputs that depend entirely on the memory of past inputs. A Mealy machine depends on both the memory and current inputs. This seems like a subtle distinction at first, but we'll work through examples of both to help distinguish between the two. We could subdivide sequential circuits even further into categories of asynchronous and synchronous, but for now, assume that we are talking primarily about synchronous circuits. Later in the course, when we get to asynchronous examples, that will be made clear. Often, you may hear the term finite state machine, or FSM. Technically, a finite state machine is a theoretical model of a computation process that can be in only one state at a time and has a limited number of states. Side note. There could be infinite state machines, like an ideal Turing machine, but nobody knows how to build them. In this course, we will build those theoretical FSMs as sequential circuits. So, functionally, you can use the term finite state machine and sequential circuit interchangeably. Here we see the general schematic for a sequential circuit. We can see immediately that it is synchronous, thanks to this clock input to the state memory there are five components. The whole point of these machines is to take some information and use that to create some other information. Thus, there are input signals and output signals. In between are three processing stages. First is next state logic, which combines information from the current inputs and memory to determine how to update the memory. Second comes that state memory, which will do whatever the next state logic tells it to do, when the clock allows it to change. What devices have we just studied that only change on clock edges? Flip-flops. So, the state memory will be composed of a series of flip-flops. Finally, there is output logic which determines what signals to send to the outside world. Should a stoplight change colors? Should a video game character get a new life? Should a vending machine give you a candy bar? These are the sorts of actions determined by this output logic interpreting the state memory. The fundamental idea that makes this a sequential circuit is this feedback loop. The current state of the machine helps determine the next state, which helps determine the next state, and so on. And this process proceeds in an orderly fashion because the clock allows all the logic some time to process before the state is allowed to change. The difference between Mealy and Moore circuits can be seen on the schematic. Here we have a Moore machine because the output logic is not a function of the current inputs. There is no wire connecting the inputs straight to the output logic. But here we see that wire appear. So this is a Mealy machine. Again, in a Mealy circuit, the outputs are a function of two things, the state memory and the current inputs. As we will see with later design examples, this distinction often results in a Mealy machine needing one fewer state in memory than a Moore machine. Let's make this discussion a little more concrete with an example. Recall this air hockey scorekeeper from a previous video. Based on the schematic, is this a Mealy or a Moore machine? The answer is Mealy. This is due to this signal that travels from the input button straight to the output logic. If the score to win the game is, say, 6 points, then the circuit will output its finished signal at the time when 5 points are in the register and the button is pressed. 
we could accomplish the same thing with a Moore machine. In that case, this wire would be removed. Then, the finish signal would occur once six points appear on the register. Another question for you. How many flip-flops are included in the memory? The answer is four. This register shows four binary values. Each bit is stored on one flip-flop. Maybe it's a JK flip-flop. If so, this next state logic would be sending four separate J and K instructions simultaneously to tell each flip-flop what to do. On this final slide, I want to make sure you understand two terms that I've been using frequently, state and output. The state of a sequential circuit is represented by the series of binary values in the register. This is all internal information. The output is the signal sent externally as a result of the state. So in this example, the state of the machine is 0101, which we interpret as decimal 5. But the output of the machine is 0, which we interpret as don't turn on the flashing lights yet because the game isn't over. As we go through the upcoming analysis and design lessons, we will encounter some fairly lengthy tables and diagrams. You will gain a little by watching the videos. You will gain a whole lot more by working the follow along problems in step with the lesson. Start practicing that now. From this video, you can complete the first problem for this lesson.